Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we are continuing with exercise 2.24 from the Art of Electronics and for this exercise we have already been through part 1 and part 2. So for this question we are looking at a current source as shown on the screen now. It's built using a potential divider over here, an NPN transistor and a biasing resistor down here. What this circuit does is keeps a constant current which is set by this point and this point for the load. If you want more of a background on how the circuit works then go to my first video to check that out. So before we continue, a big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. They offer PCB manufacturing and assembly services with quick turnaround and competitive prices. You can upload your Gerber files directly, choose your board specification and get an instant quote. Don't get hung up on choosing the colour of your PCB, there are many options to choose from. They support a wide range of options including multi-layer boards, flexible PCBs and assembly for both surface mount and through-hole components. PCBWay also hosts a shared projects community where designers can share their work and browse open source projects. It's a good resource if you're looking for inspiration or reference designs. So once again, thanks to PCBWay for supporting this channel and sponsoring this video. You'll find a link in the description if you'd like to try them out for your next project and get a bit of a discount for yourself. I also share my projects on the PCBWay community page, so you can check out my projects there too if you want to order them for yourself. Now let's continue the question and we're starting with part C. So part C says if VBE varies according to delta VBE equals minus 0.0001 delta VCE, how much will the load current vary over the compliance range? So previously we calculated the compliance range as 0.1 volt to I think it was 8.8 .8 volts if I remember correctly. So we know that the VCE change is going to be this much. So if the VCE change is going to be 8.7 volts, from there we can calculate how much the VBE change is going to be using the equation that the question has given us. So delta VBE is equal to minus 0.0001 delta VCE. So we know our delta VCE is 8.7, so we're going to times that by 0.001. So this gives us a delta VBE of 870 microvolts. So micro is times 10 to the minus 6. From there, we know how much delta VBE is going to change. We can calculate the change in load current, which is approximately the change in emitter current as we know from this circuit over here. So what this equation is telling us is that as the voltage over here, VCE changes, the voltage over here will change according to this relationship. So as VCE goes up, VBE will go down by approximately 870 microvolts. So if we started with an assumption of 0.6 volts over here, so let's say we had 1.6 volts over here, which is approximately true. We take 0.6 volts here, and that means that we end up with 1 volt on this junction. Now, when the VCE changes, we know that VBE will go down by 870 microvolts. Therefore, we have a new VBE voltage, which is going to be 0.6 volts minus 0.00087 volts which obviously is not a massive change, but this does result in the output current changing. And we can approximately calculate that by just doing Ohm's law on this equation over here. So now we know the change in the VBE voltage, which is 870 microvolts. And therefore, we can calculate the change in the emitter current over here, because this voltage is going to change. And the emitter current is equal to the load current, ignoring the small base current that's going to be present. So if you write the emitter current uh, equation, that is basically equal to VE divided by R, that's basically Ohm's law. And then we can rewrite this equation as IE equals delta VE over R. So we need a delta sign there as well. So change in the emitter current, which is going to be the change in the load current as well. So we know that change in the emitter voltage is 870 microvolts, so 0.000. .000 8, 7, divide by 1500, which is the emitter resistor, which gives us a delta IE of 580 nanoamps. So a very small change. So this is the solution for part C. 
Now let's quickly look at part D. And part D says, what is the temperature coefficient of output current assuming that beta does not vary with temperature? So beta is the current gain. And the second part of part D is what is the temperature coefficient of the output current assuming that beta increases from its nominal value of 100 by 0.4% per degree C. So let's tackle the first part first. So we're ignoring any beta variation. So we know that this basically behaves like a diode because it is a, a PN junction right there. So the transistor is basically NPN, which this is the collector, this is the base, and this is the emitter. Now, if you look at this junction over here, that's basically a diode. And the relationship over here behaves like a diode as well. And we know that a diode changes its voltage by 2 millivolts per degree C. So that's its forward voltage drop. So if I was to give you an example, let's say um, a diode's IV curve. So that's V, that's I. And obviously it'll look typically something like this. Let's say that's at... 25 degrees C. If the temperature was decreased, so temperature was reduced, what that equation says, or what this equation says, is that the diode voltage drop will increase. So let's say that is minus 20 degrees C, and the relationship is minus 2 millivolts per degree C. And obviously if the temperature goes up, then the diode voltage will go in this direction. So using this relationship, we can calculate the temperature coefficient of the output current. So basically what happens is this voltage will change by 2 millivolts for every degree C. And we know that output current, I load, is equal to IE, assuming base current is zero. We know that the load current is approximately equal to the emitter current. And we know that the emitter current will change as the VBE voltage will change. So this point is going to be fixed at 1.6 volts and this will change with temperature by 2 millivolts per degree C. So IE is equal to VE divided by RE. So essentially what we're saying is the relationship for temperature is going to be this equation but the delta. So delta IE is equal to delta VE divided by RE. We know that RE is 1500 so minus 0 0.002 divide by 1500. This tells us the absolute change in emitter current per degree Celsius is going to be 1.33 microamps per degree C. So that is the solution for the first part of D. So the current goes up with temperature. Don't forget the minus sign. Now for the second part, let's consider the case where beta itself is temperature dependent. We are told that beta increases from its nominal value of 100 by 0.4% per degree C. So the temperature coefficient of beta is 0.4% per degree C. Your collector current IC is equal to IB times beta. So if beta increases with temperature and the base current stays the same, then the current through the load would also increase proportionally. So the temperature coefficient on the output current from the beta variation with temperature is going to be 0.4% per degree C due to this relationship if we assume that IB remains fixed. So the total temperature coefficient is going to be the temperature coefficient from the first part of this question plus the temperature coefficient of the beta change as well. So the beta change is 0.4% per degree C. So for the first part we should turn that into a percentage value. So we had 1.33 microamps divided by 680 microamps, which gives us 0 0.00196. And if you multiply that by 100, we get 0.196% per degree C from our previous answer. We can add this to this number over here. So the final answer is going to be 0 0.4 plus 0.196 which is equal to 0.596 percent per degree C. So the load current temperature coefficient is 0.596 percent per degree C and is a summation of the VBE voltage changing and the 
beta changing with temperature. Obviously the beta change has a bigger effect as in it has a 0.4% whereas the so for this solution we have made a massive assumption in that the IB remains fixed. Now in the real circuit that probably won't remain fixed and there's going to be a more complex solution to this question. So if you know how we can involve a change in IB as well with temperature for this question, please let me know in the comment section below and share your solution with the community. That will be much appreciated. And that wraps up the solution for question 2.24 from the Art of Electronics. As we've seen, the temperature can have a noticeable effect on the transistor circuit behavior and understanding these coefficients is vital for designing circuits that operate reliably over a range of temperatures. So thank you for watching today and I'll see you in the next video.